We, may, we must take God at his word. We must take God at his word. Amos 3 and 3. This is my wife's, one of my wife's favorite scriptures. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? When you decide to walk with somebody and you say, I'm going to be there for you, even when they're at their ugliest moment, you still stay with them because you said, I agree to walk with you. Even at your most hurtful time, you said, I've agreed to walk with you. And I'm sure there was some times that God said something to Enoch to make him stop doing something, to get him to stop doing something that wasn't right in God's eyes. That kind of hurt Enoch. But because Enoch had agreed to say, Lord, I'm going to follow you, he continued to faithfully walk with him. Enoch wasn't born a Christian. Enoch didn't have any super powers or abilities or anything like that. Enoch made up in his mind that he was going to walk with God. He agreed to it. And how can we walk together as a church if we don't agree? Mm. On the word of God. And we don't agree to serve God. Mm. If we don't agree, agree that God is running this church, not Pastor Vic. And then Pastor Vic is just reading the word and presenting the word to you. You get mad at me, then you get mad at God because I didn't write it. Number two, second thing we must consider is we must take the word to the world, to the world, just like Enoch did. It's, this is in Jude. There's only one chapter in Jude. Verse 14 and 15, it said, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness and all the defined words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. We got to let people know God is coming. And when he comes, he's going to judge you for everything that you've done, everything that you said, and even everything that you've so stop thinking that stuff about me. <laughs> stop praying for me. <laughs> Pray for me. Don't be talking about me. Pray for your brother. Don't talk Amen. about him. Pray for your sister. Don't talk about him. Amen. But take the word to the world. We, there's not enough Christians taking the word to the world. I was so pleased yesterday at Focus on the Family. Amen. Amen. I was so pleased with that. Doing the Patriots and the Broncos game, because 316 is Tebow's favorite verse. So they had a bunch of kids reciting John 316. Multi ethnic. Just kids probably no more than 12, from 5 to maybe 12. And they reciting a little by little. And at the end, the little girl said, Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they said, for God so loved the world, that whosoever, they would say, anybody? Anybody. And the little girl just said, wow. And I was so glad. And then it says, focus on the family. I said, yes! <laughs> because you know what? We're so afraid to talk about, and I, I wish that they, they would really go into the locker room of the Denver Broncos and see how Tebow, God has used Tebow to change the locker room atmosphere. Because I've been in those locker rooms before. I know what goes on in them locker rooms. I know the talk. I know the stuff that goes on in the locker room. I know about sometimes they sneak women in the locker room. I know about that stuff. But I'm sure that Tebow tells them, instead of y'all going to the club, come on, y'all, let's go visit these little kids at the hospital. Well, as a matter of fact, let's have a Bible study. He said last night, he said, if I'm not up at the field house, I'm at the house. He said, because I don't listen to all that stuff people say. I'm sure that he's led some people on his team to the Lord. The coaches have a different perspective on life now. John Elway has a different perspective. I, I wish they would talk about some of that stuff. Instead of marketing. Talking about, hey, what is he doing? He's praying, praying, talking to the man upstairs. <laughs> Call his name, his name is Jesus. We got to take the word to the world. Number three, the
The last character thing we need to consider is we must take our lives and live for God. All right. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bear fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Colossians 1 and 10. Who are you living for? You living for your children? Wrong. You living for your spouse? Wrong. You living for you? Wrong. You living for the church? Wrong. If you're not living for the Lord, you're living for the wrong person. Yes. Might feel good while you're doing it, but it's not going to last long. And you're not going to achieve anything. Because only what you do for Christ is going to last. Yes. You can keep trying to do your own thing. All right. Keep on. My mom used to say, a hard head make a soft behind. <laughs> Some of y'all sitting on pure cotton. <laughs> One who walked with God. Anybody in here ready to walk with God? Yeah. You tired of walking with the wrong 